right, we're on our way to Grant's. Grant's is about 44 miles away, and we're going to the, uh, what you call it, Visitor Center? No, Mining Museum. The New Mexico Mining Museum at Grant's. Yeah. Is that what we're on? Yeah. Turn right onto I oh. Avenue. The... Then the destination is on your right. Okay. Oh, well, that's a cool. So here we are, Looks like turning onto uh, Iron I'm Avenue. All the way up the road. Little park, mm -hmm. a caboose. There's the mining Church museum. Destination is on your right. Ah, Doesn't look like Ten there's dollars. parking there. Canadian Miners Building. Arrived. Okay, we've got a sign over here that tells us that there's History parking museum. here. Cibola County History Museum. Mother Whiteside Memorial Building. A couple of little parks. So that's the mining museum in there? Mm hmm. Over there. All right. We need all our warm worms on and not too warm worms, though. I guess we'll be indoors. Yeah, we'll be indoors. Just our vests. Then. Okay, we have arrived at the uh, museums and grants. As you can see in front of us, there's the Cibolo County History Museum. Our mining museum is over there. Uh, so we'll be heading there to take a look at it, and uh, we'll take you and with there's us. There's a little park with uh, some kind of big equipment from mining. Some mining equipment back there. Yeah. Yeah, there seemed to be equipment all the way around the park from the videos that I watched. And you just across the road from the uh, railroad tracks. All right, so we're here. Uh, we'll take you with us and get some uh, video for you there. I'll put the chesty on. How's that? All right. Okay, we're going to go into the mining museum in Grants. Is that far enough for now? <laughs> we're going in the mining museum in Grants. I've never been into Grants before. I've always passed by it. around. That's just me, not the whole this side. park. Let's turn it around. So and there's see the park. some of the mining equipment that's out here. There's the front door. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Should be open. All right. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. New Mexico Mining Museum, Chamber of Commerce, Visitor Center. This is all the things. Hello. Ooh, Hello. I like it already. Hi. Welcome in to <laughs> Thank you. On um, this, this in-between holiday. Yeah. Is it a good time to be here? Yes. Is the shaft open? Yes. It is? Yes. All right. actually have a tour down there right now. I mean, someone touring down there. Well, we'll wait until they're done. That way we can look around up here. And you're welcome to look around at everything up here. And then uh, the tour of the museum is $5 for adults, um, $3 for seniors. But you guys aren't seniors. Oh, we don't like admitting we're seniors. Depends on the age you, you consider seniors. Well, with the girls, when we, they first put that price in, I got that two years, and then I, I get the senior discount. So, yeah, it comes up pretty quick. <laughs> Are you a state park facility? No. Okay. How old is a senior? A senior is um, really a child's age, is what one guy told me here. <laughs> it's all right. Just charge me the same as a child, he tells me. <laughs> uh, but it's 60. 60 and Oh, dang it. 
you don't make the senior. One more year so to go. One, ad <laughs> one, ad one adult and one senior. Eight dollars. Receipt. No, I don't need it. Thank you. Unless you guys need it for me to go down. I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, you can turn that. When you you can take a left tour, although it exhibits on the very top about mining and everything in this area. Mm -hmm. We have um, ancient pottery room in our boardroom, which you're welcome to go in there and take a look at all of that uh, in there. Everything up here, the exhibits. Uh, there's an elevator that'll lower you to the mining exhibit underground, and it's it's a replica, but it is. We were just looking at pictures of the mines right now, and it's so identical to these pictures. Can I see them? Uh, yeah, we sure can. We're actually thinking of getting us a nice photo booth for up here. Oh, a photo booth. Thing. Cool. So anyway, you'll go underground, um, and if you use the self-guided, you push the buttons, and it'll guide you through every little piece with information, and then back out another way that is pretty cool. So, uh, so the guided buttons, it helps. I'm seeing the restrooms over here. Yes. Really <laughs> Your microphone is still on, by the way. You want me to take it off? Uh, yeah, probably if you're going in the ladies' room. That's okay. <laughs> we'll just pick it up. We'll pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's wireless, so it just follows her around. So I had one question, and that is, if you're working in a uranium mine, will you be affected by the uranium? I mean, were they affected, the miners eventually affected by right the... Now there's miners that are taken care of through the Department of Labor, uh -huh. and it was for lung exposure. Mm, yeah. Rather than, than radi... They, they don't have a lot of recorded radiation. Uh, Interesting. Or, I mean, as far as, like, uh, cancers from, mm -hmm. but they have the lung disease, and, and that was mostly from not wearing respirators and such oh. back in the day when the... Safety is different now than right. it was. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And my dad's a miner. And are they still mining for uranium Not in this here. area? There's, Excuse me, sir. There's no uranium here right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but they are mining coal in the area. I mean, there's still uranium. They're just not mining it. Right. The market. The market. Mm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Jack. So they have a very nice display so, um, of cool. uh, so both geologic and archaeological uh, displays. This one that's in front of us is archaeological. And you can buy a handful of polished stones right there. Some of the equipment that they used. Oh, they even have paleontological, pa paleontology, paleontology exhibits. That's the a dinosaur boat down there. So, do you have a challenge coin for the uh, museum? Uh, we do. Um, we so, have... where are you from? I'm from uh, Albuquerque, uh, uh, Bernalillo. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in our machine, uh, we're supposed to get maintenance. You will catch San Rafael with its What do you see? Uh, this little um, model to scale. And it won a, a fair competition, uh -huh. made in 1982 by Abe Medina Claim Operator, dedicated to the miners both living and deceased. Very cool. Oh, that's the other use they can nuclear-powered uh, submarine? Well, not only submarines, but some of the surface ships are also nuclear-powered. The carriers are all nuclear-powered. So that's another way to use it.
gamma analyzer. So my uncle Albert, who worked at uh, who worked at Los Alamos uh, for most of his life, uh, used to have the kind of equipment that they'd use up there. They'd always bring home a, a Geiger counter and some piece of uranium so he could show us the sound that it made. You know, I'm sure there was nothing legal about it, but it looked like that. How to find uranium. Zuni mine, floor spar. Mongolian cultures. Mogollon. Yeah. So this is. Uh, mm. Oh, you dropped your phone there. Is that your new phone? No, this is the old one. Well, that's not good. No bueno. No bueno. So this is actually from El Moro. This is one of the uh, one of the graffiti on the wall at El Moro. And if I remember correctly, oh. I thought Juan de Oñate. This was the one that Juan de Oñate left. We'll see it when we go to El Moro. So they still use the more archaic Anasazi to de describe the ancients. Anasazi toys. And we're even going further back here, 50 million years ago, to the volcanoes. Fossil dinosaur leg bone. And then uh, 300 million years ago to the to the dinosaurs. Oh, 200 million years ago. And then the 300 year, 300 million, shallow seas. The Western Sea, wasn't that what it was called? Yeah, that was the uh, Western Seaway. Remember, we talked about it when we were searching for fen it's treasure. Show. It's got gold on it. More equipment that's used in mining. So do we just go down the elevator by ourselves or are we supposed to go with somebody? So we can go down the elevator on our own, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so kind of cool. so here's some down, this is some uh, recording, can I see the side? Oh, this one, the button. With the buttons? Yeah, they're audio recordings. Okay, thank you. Oh, here we are. Nuclear sub. Here's El Magrudo. For the uses of uranium, ceramics and metallurgical industries, uranium oxides added to glass, produce colors ranging from pale yellow to distinctive green, uh, ceramic ware, coloring agent. Some yellow cake down there. Radio. I hope this music is royalty-free music. Radioactivity. All right. I think we're ready to go down into the uh, mine. Push the button. So I'm going to turn on this light. Wide angle. Here we go, down 
down into the mine shaft. Did you press no. M for mine? M for mine? Is that what it is? S for... I don't know. What is S? Shaft? Surface. <laughs> surface? Okay. Because when you're in a mine, that's where you go up the surface. Ah. So remember, this is a, a replica mine. Wow. So station one yeah. is right here. We're supposed to push the Where buttons, the right? speaker is, use your microphone, use your microphone to point to the speaker. To do what? To point to the speaker. Where's the speaker? Press the button. Oh. My name is Clark, and I worked in the uranium area here in the Grants area from 1957 until 1994. I'm going to talk to you today about the underground station area where you are located at this time. This is the area at the shaft where all material that comes underground is handled, such as timber, wire rope for slushers, explosives, and many other supplies. The employees also were conveyed to this location down the shaft in the cage in which you just stepped out. Ore and waste was hoisted to the surface by means of special equipment called skips. These skips were usually counterbalanced. As the loaded skip was hoisted to the surface, the empty one was going down and its weight helped the hoist pull the loaded one to the surface. Please direct your attention to the items that are being illuminated. The small winch is called a tugger and was used to pull or remove material from the shaft conveyance called a cage. The ore car sitting here is classified as a 77 cubic foot car and would hold around four tons of ore. Over in the far corner is located a porta potty. These were strategically located in the active areas of the mine and generally were serviced on graveyard ships. In the immediate area of the station were located the settling basins and pump rooms for gathering and pumping the water that flowed into the mine and directed this water to the surface. Notice the metal drainage ditch in the middle of the drift. The ditch transported the water to the pumping facilities. Explosive magazines, supply storage, shops, and lunch rooms were also located nearby. So what is this dealie? Well, I guess that closes the door. It's to open that, open and close that door, which says, must be kept closed. It's part of the tour, but I don't know where station two is. I guess probably on the way out, we, we come through mm. that door, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm skipping ahead to the end of the book here. Station two, except the red button is right there. No, yeah, that's station three. That's oh. a button over there. But this? That's not a button. Oh. Maybe two and three is one button. My name is Hal, and I worked in the uranium industry 30 years. Distribution of all material in the mine was achieved by the use of locomotives and trains. The locomotive in front of you is a four-ton battery-powered locomotive that was capable of moving five or more ore cars from the production areas to the shaft. It was also used for transporting ground support material such as timbers, rock bolts, wire mesh, as well as explosives. Miners working long distances from the shaft were transported in specially built cars to and from their working places. It should be noted that the mines were also equipped with eight-ton diesel locomotives 
as well as rubber tired loaders, trucks, and other trackless mining equipment. Hello, I'm Jack. I have 28 years experience in the uranium mining industry at Ambrosia Lake. The steel chute being illuminated we used by the motorman to load the ore into the car for transportation to the main shaft. The control valve on the opposite rib was used to open and close the door of the chute and the ore car was loaded to the motorman's satisfaction. As the ore horizon was generally above the haulage level, the miner used gravity feed to assist him in loading the ore into the ore car. Lots of Christmas decorations. My name is David W. Ogden, Jr. I began working in the uranium mining industry in 1956 as a driller's helper, later worked as mill laborer, open pit and underground miner, underground mining supervisor, and finally chemical mining and surface reclamation. From the mines stations or mining levels, haulage tunnels or drifts were advanced by drilling and blasting. The broken material was then removed by a mucking machine shown here. The miner would stand on the steel plate step and by moving the handles on the side of the machine he would cause it to advance into the broken rock and then lift the bucket over the top of the machine and deposit the material into the ore car behind it. This would clean out the track drift face in preparation for another cycle of drilling and blasting. Please note the service lines overhead. The four inch pipe was used for distribution of compressed air. The two inch steel pipe was used to bring water into the mine for use in the drilling operations. There was also a red electrical line which was used to carry the electrical current to the loaded blast holes. The black electrical cable provided electric power to the fans, flushers, lighting, and other electrical equipment. Also please note the ground support provided by the bolts, square washers, and the chain link fencing evident in the area of the haulage drift. This combination of bolts and chain link fencing was used to stabilize the ground and reduce the chance of rock slabs falling and injuring personnel and or equipment. The bolts in the sides or ribs were four feet long with an expansion anchor or shell on the end of the bolt. They were torqued to a minimum of 140 foot-pounds. The bolts in the back were six feet long and these were torqued to 180 foot-pounds. A raise is a hole driven vertically to gain access to the ore horizon. The raise you see here is a manway with ladders and a service compartment beside it, which was used for hoisting equipment such as slushers, slusher buckets, ground support materials, and explosives to the ore horizon. Some raises were driven for ventilation purposes, either for moving fresh air to working places or removing contaminated air to ventilation holes to be exhausted from the mine. Ventilation shafts or vent holes were used for exhaust or intake of atmospheric air, depending on the particular mine's ventilation requirements or plans. They were drilled from the surface with a drill rig and cased with steel to prevent caving. The diameter of the hole was engineered to transfer the optimum amount of air for a particular mine area and was typically at least four feet in diameter. Thousands of cubic feet of air per minute were transferred by a network of ventilation holes. As you leave this station, you will be leaving the haulage area and entering an area of the mine that represents the elevation where the ore is located. Now the ceiling gets lower. It even says uh, Oop. Uh, I can touch the ceiling. 
Ready? What? Oh, yeah. Where's the speaker? Oh, did you push it right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> did I push it right? Oh, well. How hard can it? It didn't make us. Uh, my name is Ernie Lucero, and I've had uh, 30 years in mining experience. The ore was blocked out into pillars in preparation for the final step in, the, in this type of mining. The pillars are then drilled with a series of holes, which are then loaded with explosives and blasted. The broken ore was then moved to an ore pass with a three-drum electric winch called a slusher and a bucket. The removal of these pillars created a large opening that was called an open stope or a ballroom similar to the one you see here, only larger. Some mines backfilled these stopes with sand after the pillars were removed to prevent large-scale caving. No one was allowed in these open stopes at any time or they would be automatically terminated. Oh, terminate, exterminate. Does that mean we're not supposed to be in here? Huh? This, nobody's supposed to be in here. They get terminated. <clears throat> Is there a light up there? Or what's mm. going on up there? There's a light back there, yeah. Oh. Dark, 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 dark. My name is George. I have worked in the mining industry for 44 years, 26 years underground for Colonel Gee, and 18 years in surface coal mining for the Lee Ranch Mine. The machine you see here is a jack leg. It drills by hammering and rotating the bit. It is fired by compressed air and uses water to wash the cuttings away from the bit. The water passes through the center of the drill steel to the bit. This type of drill is used to drill glass holes for various phases of mining process. The telescopic leg attached to the drill assisted the miner by forcing the drill steel into the hole as it was advanced. By adjusting the flow of the air to the leg, a constant pressure was applied to the drill bit. The average grade in the rock you're looking at is about 20%. Please note the roof jack located near the machine. It must be placed within six feet from the driller. This was for the safety of the miner as vibrations from the drilling operation would sometimes discharge slabs or rock that could seriously injure him or her. Yate, my name is Tom Hinio. I work in the uranium mining industry for 29 years. Most of these years were put in at Church Rock Mine Site near Gallup, New Mexico. Vet drifts were driven to provide a means of discharging contaminated air from the active working places or to provide fresh air to a particular part of the mine or working places. My name is Bill. I've spent all my working life uh, all in uranium, mostly here in the Grants area. You're now at Station 8. The holes you see here were drilled with a yeah. jack leg drill, uh, one of which you saw at Station 6. Then the holes are loaded with explosives and primed with electric blasting caps. Typically, the caps were placed inside a stick of dynamite which was shoved to the end of the hole with this wooden stick you see in the corner. And the rest of the hole was filled with ammonium nitrate. The blasting caps were timed to explode in a certain sequence, causing the drift or tunnel to be advanced to the depth of the drilled holes, usually about six feet. Please note the middle hole at the top of the drift is drilled uh, about two feet deeper to be used as a pinhole. 
This was so the miner would have two feet of hole to insert a short rock bolt and a cable pulley to remove the ore from the blasted face using the slusher you will see at the next station. The long hole drill in the drift opposite the loaded round is an air-driven rotary extension drill machine and was capable of drilling 300 feet or more into the rock overhead. The primary purpose of this drill was to delineate the overhead ore body. After a series of fan holes, a Geiger counter uh, was inserted to the full extent of the hole, and the grade or concentration of the uranium was logged on a chart. This information was plotted on a map by geologists, who then calculated the available pounds of uranium in this particular ore body. Notice the safety jack located behind the machine. The long holes drilled by this machine also drain water from the rock overhead, improving the ability to recover the ore and create a much safer working environment. Normally, the host rock in which the uranium was deposited was generally very wet, causing the rock or ground to be unstable and unreliable. My name is Ray, and I've been working in the uranium mining industry for 30 years. Remember the slope drift round with the loaded holes? The face you see here with the scraper in it is the result of the blasting of the six foot round observed at the previous station. Note the shear block hanging from the rock bolt in the back of the new face. The drifts we have observed so far were driven in the ore body to block out the ore into pillars which averaged about 35 feet square. The drifts were created by drilling and blasting as seen earlier. The drifts were marked out with the two drum slusher seen here and the scraper that you see in the end of the drift. The broken material was pulled into the race using the scraper where it was dropped down and stopped by the gate on the steel chute you saw in the haulage drift. A grizzly made from all rails is placed at the top of the race. The spacing of the rails was 14 inches to prevent a miner from falling into the race and to limit the size of boulders in the chute or ore pass. My name is Van. I've been working in and around the mining industry here in the Grants area since 1960. I would like to tell you a little bit about what you're going to see here in the shop. In order to keep from having to hoist the equipment to the surface for repair, underground mechanic shops were established for the purpose of performing major repair to the mining machinery. If there were more than one production level in the mine, there was usually a repair shop on each of the levels. Some of the equipment repaired in these shops were slushers, slusher buckets, drill machines, mucking machines, locomotives, and ore cars. Just about anything imaginable was performed by these talented underground mechanics. Please note that the shop has been stabilized by the use of rock bolts and what I wish to control the ground. There was also an electric shop underground similar to this mechanical shop where the repairs were made to the electrical components. And that's the end of our show. Uh... I'm impressed. Reminds me of the, the mine car ride at Disneyland. <laughs> lunch room. We should get our lunch out. Have lunch. I left it it's in lunch the time. truck. It's noon. Noon o'clock. Time for lunch. Hi, my name is Terry. 
I worked in the uranium mines for over 30 years. The room you have just entered is a typical lunchroom. It was used as a central command center for this particular part of the mine. Overall, safety was always a major concern and safety meetings were conducted here, as well as fire drills and other functions of supervision. Lunch was eaten here with the food often warmed in the gray metal box next to the entrance door. This box, which originally contained electrical equipment, was converted to a warming chamber with the use of floodlight bulbs. It was affectionately called the miner's microwave. To the right of the photos is one of the stretchers that was used in the mines to transport persons to the surface if he or she became injured. This particular stretcher was called a basket. A backboard with straps to completely immobilize a person was also used. The mine is set up for centralized blasting. Before a blast was set off by supervision, a thorough examination of the check-in, check-out board was conducted. If a name tag was still on the inside of the board, no blasting would occur until the owner of the name tag was located. This procedure was a central part of mine safety. Some of the equipment a miner used in his daily activities are on display here also. Note the pipe wrench, self-rescuer, battery and cap lamp, and hard hat. The miners were also provided with safety glasses, steel toe rubber boots, and hearing protection. The self-rescuers are required on any underground mine to allow miners to escape in the event of a fire. This concludes the mine tour. If you exit through the door next to the miner's microwave and the check-in board, you will be back to the station where you began your tour. Feel free to tour the mine again for a closer look if you wish. The underground activities were constructed with the guidance of miners who worked in the mines and the equipment was donated by various mining companies in the area. The underground portion was all in place before the building was erected over the mine. Please feel free to examine the upstairs portion of the museum, including the minerals in the main lobby and the ancient pottery exhibits in the conference room. Please feel free to ask any staff member for assistance in locating these exhibits. All right, well, that's the conclusion of the mine tour. We'll go back upstairs and head on out to the next thingy. Well, we just finished our tour of the mining museum and grants, and now we're going over to the El Ma Mal Pais uh, Visitor oh. Center. She wants me to turn this one. And it's only a few minutes away. Um, so. Let me show you the books that we're working with today. Scenic Driving New Mexico. And At the next stop sign, turn right. Detour New Mexico. And New Mexico Journey Guide. Those are the ones we worked on with today. And we've got a whole bunch of little magazines and brochures from the Mining Museum so we can study up for where we're going to go in the future. And it's time for lunch. Got my Have hammy sammy. Time. Turn right onto North Second Street. Leftover North from Street Christmas dinner. And apparently Siri thinks she needs to talk at the same time as me.